All we need every day is more of God, more of the Holy Spirit to, to help us every day of our life. We continue to say, Lord, Father, we want more of you. We need more of him, even at a time like this. Oh, hallelujah. More of you, Jesus. More, 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 more of you. It's all we need. We need more of you, more of you, every day of our lives, oh Lord. Oh, hallelujah, we need more of you, Jesus. Just as the light fire, tons of fire are upon us tonight, Father, all we want tonight. It's more of you, more of you, Jesus, more of you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. We want more of you, more of you. Mm. I want more of you. Oh, I want more of you. Oh, Jesus, Lord, the more I know you. The more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. I don't know if that is a declaration tonight, somebody. Oh, I want more of you. Over and over again, Lord. I want more of you, Jesus. The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you, oh God, more of you, Lord, more of you, more of you, Holy Ghost, Spirit, more of you, more of you, over and over again, more of you, Jesus, more of you. Oh yes, Lord, all oh, what I'm asking for tonight, oh Lord, is more of you, Jesus. All I need, oh God, is more of you. Father, take more of me and give me more of you. In the name of Jesus. I ask, oh God, that you take more of me and give me more of you. Holy Spirit of God, I invite your presence once again to this meeting tonight. Take your place by yourself. Teach us tonight. By yourself, take the lead while I follow in the name of Jesus. Have a Father, I'm just a vessel in your hands. So God, use me, oh God, as a vessel of honor. Even as your mouth speaks, oh God, in this end time. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, yes, Lord, I decrease that the Spirit of God might increase in me once again tonight. Even as I cover this platform with the blood of Jesus, I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. I cover every viewer out there with the blood of Jesus. By yourself tonight, give us the better understanding of the remark of your word. I subject every foul spirit of flesh in the name of Jesus. And above it all, O oh God, that at the end of tonight's meeting, we will have every cause, O oh God, to return the glory back to you. Father, help us, O oh God, to be more dedicated, O oh God. God, to the things of the kingdom. Give us the grace, O oh God, to be more dedicated, O oh God, to the great commission, O oh God, that you have committed, O oh God, into our hands. Father, we ask for grace. We need your grace, O oh Lord, for without you we are nothing. Because the Bible says that by strength no man can prevail. Father, we ask for your grace. May your grace, O oh God, be sufficient for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, sweet Holy Spirit of God, I ask that you 
Have your way tonight. Have your way tonight. Have your way tonight. Have your way tonight. Re kalabo shande yagada da da dia. Bare katara ba zantara ba to soto yagada da dia. Isa tara kalabo shande yagada ba sete yagada da da. Ore kandala ba tande ribo to soto yagada ba shande gre gre dia. Holy Spirit, take your place. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. Ora kalaba tonda ba tanze kere yagada Spirit of God, I welcome your presence in this atmosphere tonight. Take your place, take your place in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Abba Father, I give you all the glory. Thank you, glorious God. I give you all the glory. One on adoration for I declare this meeting. Open right now, Father. Let your presence, O oh God, fill this temple. May your presence, O oh God, fill this place. Yes, Lord. Re kalabo shanda yagalaba sete yagalaba. Re ba zete ragalaba zanta raba tozo to yagalaba shande gredilia. Eza ta yagalaba zeto rogola yagalaba shandia. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Abba Father. Mm. Emmanuel, you are always God that is with me, Lord. I declare this meeting open in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. For in Jesus' name, Amen. God bless every one of you that is online tonight once again i'm so happy to see every one of you god bless you i see all the ministers of god that are watching i see, like i will always say i always celebrate each and every one of you god bless you and uh, as you all are always there for me also also god himself will continue to raise his heavenly host to always be there for you all like i will always say it is all about our father's business it is not any of our business it's the business we are into it belongs to god oh hallelujah thank you every one of you for always being there and for for always coming around iron the bible said is sharpness iron like i will always say this is a ministry that god has commissioned into every one of our ends this is a ministry that God has called each and every one of us into. So when we are always there for one another, it's just we are just raising up the banner for Jesus, just letting the kingdom of darkness know that they cannot win this battle, whether you and I will like it or not. Until rapture, before the kingdom, be, before the battle between the kingdom of light and darkness, we expire. Until rapture, we are in a battlefield with the kingdom of darkness. So the more we continue to scream loud about Jesus, the more we continue to lift up the banner for Jesus the more the kingdom of darkness will continue to do what depopulate because the mission of the devil and his co-host and his agent is to see that he will populate the kingdom of hell fire itself is a kingdom on its own so this is actually the mission of the devil but what will you and i do we will not allow it because the bible says god does not want any soul to perish so what will you and i do is to continue to lift up that banner for jesus to let the devil know that no you cannot populate the kingdom of hell but rather we will continue to lift up the banner for jesus in order for a lot of souls a, a lot of souls to return back to god there are some that have been there but they have backslided in one way or the other while there are still some that have not even held the message about this gospel so they are waiting for us waiting for each and every one of us to proclaim it even as we, we our topic tonight says dedication tonight we want to be looking at dedication what is dedication and the call for self-discipline because you and i will need to be dedicated because actually a lot of things that is happening today in the world a lot of people are so dedicated to a lot of things like i will always say the way the kingdom of darkness are dedicated to their own idols the way you see that a lot of people that worship idols a lot of people that do um, do, do all manner of sacrifice in order for them to gain what to gain wealth in order for them to get to gain power you see a lot of people they pay sacrifice dearly just that is why you see a lot of people can go at any length to kill to sell kidney to sell their liver Eh? A lot of people can go at any length to make sure that ah, I must get it all. They sacrifice all manners of things. If that is how we are so dedicated to the things of God, we are so serious about the gospel, eh? about the Great Commission. I tell us now, maybe by now, eh, the sound of the trumpet. By now, the gospel itself would have, if, in fact, even gone to unreached areas. Unreached areas. But what do we see today? People are not even, we now even pay, I don't care to the things of God. Like I will always say, especially even in social media, you see anywhere they are even proclaiming the good news of Christ. How many people will you even see assembled there? 
but a few you will see but these things are no longer new to us do you know why because we are already in the end time whether we like it or not perilous times are here the bible made us to understand that at the end of it or a lot of people will now begin to have what itching in here this is what is happening today but do you know what we don't have to give up we don't have to give up so without further wasting of time i'll be taking my main passage from the book of second corinthians chapter 11 from 22 to 28 and as well matthew chapter 10 verse 16 to 26 but like i said we want to be looking at dedication together but first and foremost what does it mean when we hear the word dedication whenever we hear that word oh dedication i'd rather say according to the cambridge dictionary According to the Cambridge Dictionary, dedication is the willingness to give a lot of time or rather energy to something because that thing is very important. The willingness to give a lot of time or energy to something because indeed the thing is very, very important. You give it your own time. You put in your work. You put in your energy. You are so zealous about about it that is what dedication and as well dedication also means a state of being committed to something a state of being what committed to something before you now know that oh i must start preaching the gospel no each and every one of us there is a ministry that god has commissioned into our ends we are going to be seeing it together tonight but this is just what i have decided to do because it is what god has called each and every one of us is a tax that has been given to everyone like i will always say so long you are a a, a, a born again christian a genuine child god has commissioned into our ends it's for everybody thank you for the thumbs up i might not be calling your name but don't worry as usual after the live video i will go through the comments and uh, answer everyone god bless you all for always be there once again i celebrate every one of you thank you thank you for always coming by so what are we uh, uh, trying to say jesus makes me at night to understand it john 4 verse 34 he said jesus said unto them my will is to do the will the, the, the work of him that what sent me and he said unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work so indeed, our will, Jesus was so committed. He was so committed to his own ministry. He was so committed that no matter what, he was all, he, he stood it, he faced it all. Why? Because of you and I. In order for us not to be found wanting, in order for us to be redeemed, he was the one that, that gives us this free access, this free liberty that you and I we are having today. So if the will, or rather the meal, the will of God, the like what, what, what I will always say, Jesus was 100% God by himself and he was also man when he was here on earth. But still, he recognized and he knew that his will, or rather his meal, is to fulfill his, his own mandate. His meal is to do the will of his own father, which has, which, which, which has um, the work, or rather the, the, the mission that he came for. He, he executed it like i will always say it wasn't easy but it was it for you and i so what about you and i like i will always say there is a price that has been paid for us that we we are not even qualified eh even there is none of us even no 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 husband will say i want to die for my wife no wife will say i will die for my husband neither the father or the mother will say i will die for my children when it comes to that one we will now know that salvation is a personal business it's a personal business but do you know what his will was his milk was to do the will of his father and he did it for you and i he was so dedicated even to the last minute there comes a time in his life before he now said ah father if it is your will father if it is your will let this cup pass if it is your will do you know the pain the agony the pain that the agony before he groomed, before he screamed, all for your sake and all for myself. So, like I will always say, it takes nothing, it takes nothing, only obedient and to say, Father, here I am. God can use you as its mouth speaks in this end time. But we just have to make ourselves available. He's looking for vessels every day. Said so many are called, but few are chosen. The harvest is plentiful, but indeed the laborers are few. Are you uh do you want to be among the few do you want to be among the few so quickly like i said we are going to be looking at second corinthians chapter 11 
verse 22 to 28 but before then there is one thing that i, I have realized in this hour in this our world in this end time one quality thing that is so getting in fact is so rampant today is the advance in technology advance in technology and civilization and we call it dedication impatience and inconsistency are replacing our commitment to the great world commission that god has commi commissioned into our hands you see a lot of us we are so dedicated to our our our, our daily choices we are so dead even some of us we are so dedicated to even internet social media and we are so dedicated to it but we leave the real mission that some of us would have even been using our platform our social media for like i will only you will understand me better when we get to matthew chapter 10 verse 16 to 26 this is one thing like i said even a lot of people we are a lot of people today have itching in here people don't even want to hear again but whether we like it or not we must continue to preach we must continue to scream we must continue to tell them what god has asked us to do do your part like i will always say do the part that you know you can do best and let me do the part that i know that i can do best to god be all the glory but do you do it yes do you obey yes so all it takes is just simple obedience and simple say father here i am use me like i will always say god is still looking for those that are not qualified every day to make use of them as it's much peace in this end time god is still looking for those people that they are they, in fact they were very very worst eh yesterday thank god for our tonight's meeting when we came together in our prayer meeting by seven o'clock it was just as if they've read they've seen what i i, I was about, a, about to minister tonight dedication a lot of us we fail to dedicate to the things of god why because of our past what will people say or rather the devil is still trying to use your past against you like i will always say one thing i've come to realize the more you dedicate yourself to the things of god let me tell you something the more you see yourself living and striving towards perfection because this time around you will know that oh I myself am already like a mirror. People are watching me. People want to see the life that I will live. So the more you commit yourself to the Great Commission, the more you see God beautifying your life. That is why the Bible says, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach what? The good tidings. You are not even doing it uh, 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 in secret now, openly. Openly, I know eh, eh, my, vi my, my video sometimes goes viral, so it is not something that you do eating. So you, it will not even help you to live a life of consciousness, a life of self-examination every day. So we are think this is one of the advantage of just obeying the, 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 the voice of God and do what God has asked you to do. Like seriously, it helps a lot when you really involve yourself in the Great World Commission. So this is... I just want us to know we, we, we should go back it's time eh, that we go back to the drawing board to learn about dedication and practice it and practice it and practice it somebody so like i said we are going to be seeing a uh, 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 second corinthians chapter 11 verse 22 to 28 god bless every one of you minister precious i said every one of you sometimes if you don't even write i might not see that you are watching but god bless you about to some of you that i already know your profile picture once you give me thumbs up i will know that oh it's this person just like minister precious just give me a thumbs up and a, a thumbs up and i know that she's there god bless you woman of god uh, mama susanna i mama susanna i cite you mama joy god bless you minister boss a brown i cite you i don't know if you are still there but i cited your profile picture earlier before now uh, mama susanna god bless you i have a partner in this ministry eh i have a partner in this ministry my partner in this ministry is mama susanna guy i call her my mama in germany god bless you man for always there she's my partner so you see sometimes like i will always say every one of us we can do it but iron they said it's sharpness iron she's always there right from day one over three years i've been in this mission she's always there she's always there mama god bless you and like i will always say god will beautify your life he will beautify your life and eh? your good art god will bless your good art eh? exceedingly abundantly like i will always say sometimes good people they don't supposed to lack they don't supposed to want they don't supposed to in fact be going through anything but sometimes we cannot question god so i just want to acknowledge the presence of every one of you god bless you all so quickly my wonderful people let's quickly see second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 22 to 28 i'm talking about dedication tonight let's see dedication uh the bible says are they hebrews so i am are they israelites so i am are they the seed of abraham so 
I am. Are they ministers of Christ? Ah, I speak as a fool. I am more in, in I am more in labors, more what abundance, in stripes above measures, in prisons more frequently, in death often. From the Jews five times I received forty stripes minus one. This was Apostle Paul speaking. This was Apostle Paul speaking. Now, Apostle Paul was so concerned about the church in Corinthians. He had them in mind about their faithfulness. He was so concerned about them because he does not want them to perish. He was so concerned about them. Why? Because he does not want them to be the same. Let us remember that the end time is here. A lot of people are out there that are still being deceived. And you and I will know the truth. The Bible says, A ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So like I will always say, the truth that you and I we have known is for us to help other people. The truth I am talking about is not any other truth than Jesus, which is the word of God. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except what through me. Except through me. So you and I, we have known the truth. So it's not left for us to also be concerned about those that have not known the truth. About those that have not known Jesus. About those that have not even known about rapture. There are still people, whether we like it or not, I'm telling us the fact. There are still people that are just living the life that they are living, believing that there is no second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ again. And the Bible, minister, see why God bless you all. And the Bible makes us to understand that whether we like it or not, the second coming of Christ, whether that is why when this coronavirus was, I told people, I said, let's forget this issue of Antichrist. Which one be anti Christ? Anti Christ. It's just that right now we can say they are already preparing. We can say they are already preparing. It is after rapture that anti Christ, that, that according to the word of God. So we will not turn the Bible upside down. Whether there is no any anti Christ now, there is no any mark of the beast now. We can only say, oh, they are preparing. Because the Bible made us to understand that immediately after the sound of the trumpet, then they will, they, will they, they will step in and begin to execute their mission. So they must get themselves preparing. And that is why you and I as well, we must as well be preparing. But that does not mean that they are in operation now. I don't believe it according to the Bible. So what we are always saying now, we can rather say they are already preparing. They are already preparing. Because why? Like I said, immediately after after the sound of the trumpet, they will step in and begin to execute. So for me, for the now, the mark of the beast is not yet in existence. I am telling us, so people will say, this ejection, this uh, this one, these chiefs, let, let's, not, let, let's focus more on the scripture. That is why I will always say, when you study the word of God, nobody will tell you what is not. But I would rather let us know that there are a lot of people that does not still believe that the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is real. But whether we like it or not, Jesus is coming back again. And this is why Apostle Paul was so consigned about the church in Corinth. So this is the area where dedication is coming in tonight. So God wants you and I to be so dedicated to the uh, 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 preaching of the gospel. To be so dedicated in doing what? in Let us show concern for as many that are still in the world. Like I will always say, don't be selfish with your own salvation. God has saved you in order for you to be able to bear more fruit for him. I'm talking about dedication tonight. So I don't know that which you are dedicated to. But the only thing we need to be much more dedicated to is what? Is the things of God. Is the business of our Father which is in heaven. Nothing more, nothing less. I will always tell people there is time and season for everything. Create a time for God. Create a time for God to preach the good news to people as well. This was what Apostle Paul was trying to explain in this particular verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22 to 28. I'm going to be explaining the whole verse later. Now, let me continue. He said, three times I was beaten with rod. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day. I have been in deep, in journeys of two, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness. We saw all what he was going through, but yet he was still dedicated to his cause and to his mission. He was still dedicated to his cause and to his mission. The, let's keep seeing what the Bible is telling us about him. And he said, 
he perished among false brethren, in weariness, in toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and taste, in fatness often, in cold, in nakedness, beside the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern, out of it all, out of all this I was going through, I never gave up, but I was still consigned for all the churches who are weak. I was still consigned, no matter what we are going through as people of God, we still need to be dedicated in doing what? Be consigned for a lot of people that have backslided and as well a lot of people that are weak. And that is why I say the more you preach the gospel, the more you begin to know more about God. This Bible will continue. In fact, there is a verse you will read today. The way the Holy Spirit will translate that verse again to you tomorrow. Oh my goodness. It will not look as if it was the verse you read yesterday. Like I always say, I can, you can read John 3.16 now. Tomorrow you read John 3.16. You begin to see a different message entirely. From the John 3.16 that you knew, for God so loved the world, that he gave it his only boy, his son. So, the Bible, nobody knows it all. That is what I, nobody, no bishop, no apostle, no G.O. knows this word of God. Nobody knows it all. You understand? We see the word of God, we see it. That is why I love that song that I, I, I played earlier on. Fresh, it, it is like, it is fresh every day. The more you read it every day, though the more the Holy Spirit of God gives you a better understanding of it. You see, just like the way I'm exalted tonight, tomorrow I might see Minister Boss Abraham exalting as well. It will be a different thing. And when I go there, I listen. I, will, I must pick something from there. I will also pick something from her. Ah, because why? Nobody knows it all. So we have to be concerned about the church of God. And who is the church? We see what Apostle Paul is telling us tonight. Who is the church of God? That is another question now. Like I will always tell us the church of God is not the building. The church of God, they are paid people. They are persons. Because people make up the building. This is what Apostle Paul is trying to explain to us in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 22. Now, I'm going to read it to 33. Now, it went further. He said, even despite I was weak, my deep concern, out of it all, I was stoned. People said all manners of things against me. Among false brethren, every evil thing that we think of happens to him. But still, he said something. He said, I, by deep, out of it all, I was so dedicated. I was still dedicated. And my dedication was to the weak. And that is why I love him when he said, Unto the Jews, I behave like a Jew, and, to, and unto the Greeks, I behave like a Greek, that I might be able to win them all. Like me before now, I know how to capitalize on people's weakness. And sometimes, you that is me, that, that is why I used to say, sometimes when you point this one finger to somebody, the rest is coming back to you. My wonderful people, I want us to be so dedicated in this end time. Do you know why? Because sometimes we focus attention on people, forgetting about ourselves. First and foremost, look at yourself. The life I am living now, like seriously, is a life of, I am looking more about myself because sometimes when you focus more on people you will forget about yourself so by the time i keep watching myself and the holy spirit of god will keep helping me to watch the step that i take to watch what i say to watch what i do i am working it day by day towards what perfection without now looking at other people's weakness because you that is looking at other people's weakness there are still people that are looking at your own too that is why i said i thank god for our this night meeting when we met at seven o'clock in our prayer meeting you understand yes in one way or the other there are a lot of people that have weaknesses so what do we need to do the bible says we need to do what a uh, love love covered what multitude of sins you understand so this was exactly what apostle paul was saying in this chapter that was why i said it was it looks as if they peeped through my message tonight when they were when uh one of our mama was uh, even after a uh, exhortation and prayer even when our pastor also uh, uh, uh spoke a little while it's like they peeped through so a lot of people today might be counting on your past they never knew it that that you have had an encounter with the Holy Spirit of God. Now, you that had that encounter with Jesus, it's now left for you to be dedicated to the work or rather the business of God. People might still crucify you. People might still be saying all manners of things. The Bible says that the devil is the accuser of what? 
brethren, they might still want to be accusing you with those your weaknesses. Leave them there and be so focused and be dedicated to your father's world business. Remember, like I will always tell us in the book of John chapter 15, the Bible says, they that will not bear fruit, he will cut them off. On that day, there is no excuse that is because of my brother, it is because of my sister, it is because of my husband, it is because of my children, it is because of my business, it is because of my job. No, but still, out of it all, like Apostle Paul just said, and this was, uh, it, it is this picture, there's one of our minister last week, Minister Richard, that said, there are things that Apostle Paul will say, we will say, this is exactly our point. You see what Apostle Paul was explaining now in this particular verse. He said, yes, I was beaten. I went into prison. I went through shipwreck. I went through hardship. But still, I care for the church. I care for the people. And I love the word he used. He said, by deep concern for all the churches that we are weak and I am not yet weak. I was not weak though. Even up, upon all what I went through, I was not weak. I didn't give up. I was still steadfast and I still showed concern for the churches that were weak. And I am not weak who is made to stumble. And I do not burn with indignation. If I must boast, I will boast of the things which concern my infirmity. If I must boast, I must boast about my hardship. If I must boast, I must boast about my persecution. If I must boast, I must boast about my trials. If I must boast, I must boast about the things that are not working in my life. Because I know that everything will work perfectly together for my good. Whether things are working or things are not working, I must continue to boast about Jesus. This was exactly what Apostle Paul was saying. Whether things are working or not working, I must care for those that are weak. I must show concern for the preaching of the gospel. I must raise up the banner for Jesus. I must be consistent confessing Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. I must not look back. This is what dedication. This is dedication. This is dedication. And he went for that. He said, the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. In Damascus, the governor under Aretas, the king, was guiding the city of Damascus with a garrison desiring, desiring to arrest me. But I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped from what is hands. Now, let's see this verse together. What is the uh, 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 Apostle Paul trying to tell us tonight? In this particular verse, are they Hebrews? So I am. Paul's human ancestry was more than enough to qualify him as an apostle. Not only was he the seed of Abraham, actually, but he was also of the Israelites. Not only was he of the Israelites, he was also of the Hebrew, meaning he was a Jew of Judean. If you read the story of Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul was a Jew of the Judean descendant, as opposed to the Jews who were born from the people coming from the areas of, of Judah. So even when he got the encounter with God, that was why he knew, ah, he was not qualified. And I used the word earlier on, ah, unto the Jew, I behave like a Jew. And unto the Greeks, I would behave like a Greek, that I would be able to do what? Win there. Because he knew it that he wasn't qualified. So also you and I. We, we are not the people that we are qualified. We, we are not at all. But Jesus Christ qualified you and I. He gave us the liberty. He gave us the freedom to be able to not do what? Be able to speak boldly about him to other people. That is why I will always say don't be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Apostle Paul grew up in Tarsus of Sicilia. If you read the book of Acts of Apostles chapter 21 verse 39. But this apparently actually means that his own parents were Judean Jews who moved to Tarsus, who moved to, uh, to Tarsus before or after Paul was born. Before Paul was born. Now, Paul knows very well that his blood ascensory does not make him, like I said now, he, he does not even qualify him to become a servant of Jesus. But many of the most element apostles then neither said or implied that it was important knowing what that is it. Paul was not indeed qualified. But Paul's perfect remarks here, which I love so much, was that he said, I speak foolishly, yet to make a point, to expose the foolishness of the most element apostles and to glorify the nature of Jesus. He continued, he said, are they not ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. He is a man that always knows his weakness. 
He knows his weakness. But still, he was dedicated. He was dedicated. He said, I speak as a fool. I am more than most element apostles claim to be ministers of Christ. When they use this term, it probably sounded that I am honored. Is it that I am privileged? Is it that I was privileged? Is it that I am honored? According to, I'm just trying to explain the entire verse for us to break it, break it gradually now for us. But I love what he said. He said in labors, in labor, I labor what more abundantly. I am a minister of Christ because I work harder. He knew that, he knew his weakness and he also knew what his strength. He knew his own weakness and as well, he knew what his strength. I work harder than any other apostles for Jesus' sake. If it's our time, they will say, oh, this person is proud. Oh, no. Even you yourself, when you are actually dedicated to the cause and eh, to the business of your father, you will know. When, even me myself, there was a time in my life. It's like I was not even serious again with the things of God. So when you are dedicated, you will know. You will know by yourself. Ah, 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 it's like I am going off track. It's like I am backsliding. You know, I am backsliding. When you are backsliding, you know. When you return back to the state that you used to be, you know. You know as a child of God. So I'm speaking about dedication tonight. I'm just, I just want us to go back to our drawing board. He said in the book of Revelation, I owe this word against you. Let's go back to our first love. Our first love for Christ. This is what Apostle Paul was just trying to let us know. And I love the fact that he said, in labor, I labor so much. I work harder. I work harder every day. I work harder every day. I labor more abundantly than they are. Dedication. 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 In stripes. In strife above measure, I was still a minister of Christ because I have been beaten many times for Jesus, for the sake of Christ. Have you been beaten? Have you been persecuted? Like I will always say, we must face other things, but still, you need to do what? Be dedicated to the cause of your father. You need to be dedicated. Don't allow anything to talk you out of your father's business. It is your father's business. Through the book of Acts, we read of no less than about 18 journeys Apostle Paul took by ship, with half of them occurring before the writing of 2 Corinthians. We see that the book of Acts accomplished a lot and a lot of record about Apostle Paul, his histories. We saw a lot of things that he actually went through, but still, like he's telling you and I tonight, out of it all, he was still what dedicated. What are you going through as a child of God? What are you passing through? I don't know those things that is still holding you back in order for you not to be dedicated to the cause that your father has sent you. Like I said, the greatest thing that we can do for God is to go out there and preach the gospel to all living creatures. To everyone. He said to everyone. So I, I, I will quickly also read Matthew chapter 10, verse 16 to 26 for us tonight. Matthew 10, and he says, Behold, I sent you forth as sheep. In the midst of wolves. <laughs> God has sent each and every one of us. I am sending you forth as sheep. In the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents. And harmless as doves. Like I said a lot of people are still being deceived. We have a lot of people that, has, that, that are still working under manipulations. We have a lot of people that are working under deception. So if you and I hide the word of God, we hide the truth, these people could be destroyed. They will not know that they are under spells. They will not know that they are working under enchantment. They will not know that they are working under manipulation. Until you and I will go forth and tell them. That is why the Bible says, be dedicated. I am sending you now. As sheep in the midst of wolves, be ye therefore wise as serpents, and be harmless as a dove. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogue. This was what, Apostle, what happened to Apostle Paul. He was being scourged. He went through prison. He went through, we saw, that is why I am linking this particular chapter now to Matthew chapter 10, verse 16 to 26. So when we bring the two together, we will see that even Jesus has already, it was exactly what Jesus said in Matthew 10, verse uh, 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 16 to 26. That was what Apostle Paul now was now explaining in, in that uh, book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22 to 28. He undergoed it. He went through other things. He was being scourged because Jesus has already made you and I to understand. He said, come now, I am sending you forth. I am sending you now 
as a sheep among them in the midst of the wolves. So know it that if you are a sheep in midst, in midst of wolves, the wolves will not like you. They will hate you. They will persecute you. They will say all manners of things against you. You will be scourged by them. But Jesus has already said to you and I, these things is going to happen to you. But what will you do? Let's keep on reading. Matthew, Mama, and Abbe, God bless you. He said, but beware of them. They will deliver you up to the councils. They will scourge you in their synagogue. And you shall be brought before the governors and the kings for my sake. For a testimony against them and the world and the Gentiles. And these things happened to Apostle Paul. It all happens to him. Now, and it's as well happening to a lot of us already today. Yes, these things as well is happening to a lot of us already. But do you know what? You need to stand. You need to stand out. You Like I will always say, even if it looks as if, oh, it won't look as if it is only you that is standing. You are never, you, it, every true child of God can never be alone. You can never, never be alone. Don't say because people are hating you for no just cause. Because people are saying no manners of things against you. Like I say, I prefer people to call me over Sabi, hypocrite, and show off for my father's business that people will be calling me over Sabi, hypocrite for worldliness. What have they said about you since you have decided to say, I want to dedicate my life to Jesus? Have they said anything of such against you? If you have not, eh? If, if, if not, you better say check yourself. Because if you are dedicated to a cause, the people, there are people that must rise up against you for no just cause. You by yourself, you will know that yes, it's because of my father's business. And the more they crucify you, the more they persecute you, somebody, the more you keep on lifting your banner for Jesus. The more you keep on screaming, Father, I know that it is because of you. Here I am for you. The more, like, see, in, in, like I will always tell us, by the time you really know that you are for God, there are things you don't need to fear any longer. There are things that you don't need to allow it matter most to you. There are things that you don't even pay your attention to any longer but the only thing that now moves you the only thing that now pays at you pay your attention to is god and god and god and god alone facebook is doing some funny funny things i don't even know if anybody is writing on this video now the way facebook is doing i don't know but nevertheless take it from me like that any other facebook is treating or treating us these days let us flow along with facebook like that i see people watching sometimes i will see people are watching sometimes i see people are not watching so it's all all to the glory of god even if i'm alone now i don't even know whether i'm alone on this live video but i know i can never be alone because i know i am not here because i want to be here so god bless you all if you are watching from the background god bless every one of you because i would rather say it's just like i am talking to the camera i am seeing my picture at my back but i know god is always at my front at my back at my side so god bless you all facebook is really acting funny but what am i trying to say in essence i'm still reading matthew chapter 10 verse 16 matthew 10 16 to 26 the bible makes us to understand it said and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake for my sake oh not for the sake of worldliness for my sake and that is why i used to laugh at people that would say oh people are, don't allow people to hate you or envy you because of worldliness i am telling you because all these things like i will always say we only need these things as permanent these things we go leave them here we will leave all these things here but be so zealous about your father's business and let them begin to say whatever they want to say but do you know what be focused be focused like I, you you probably understand me better let's go deep down on this scripture tonight i'm talking about dedication dedicate to the cause to the great mandate to the to the work of your father to the ministry that god has commissioned into your world into our into our ends every one of us every one of us and i love our verse 19 that says but when they deliver you up when they deliver you up take no thought how or what you shall speak for it shall be given to you in the same hour what you what you shall speak for it is not you that speak it but the spirit of your father will speak it what in you it is not you so one thing that i will always say jesus have already said go it is not you that will speak it is not you that will win the soul it is not you it is the spirit of god that works that work in the inside of us it is the Holy Spirit that will begin to walk, that will begin to manifest. You understand? Like I will always tell us, see, when you are dedicated, I am going back again. You yourself, you will know that you are dedicated. 
a lot of us we are busy 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 we don't even hear from god any longer remember like richard musa will always say every one of us we have a way that we hear from god something happened to me this morning again and i looked at my life i said father i need your grace to carry on it doesn't really matter something happened to me this morning there is a morning devotion i normally connect to online 6 a.m to 7 a.m every day monday to friday six o'clock to seven a.m that morning devotion one of our dickness called me I, I saw a message even yesterday she said "Asta rachel please you'll be leading us in the prayer section this morning that was what she said to me she wrote me whatsapp she didn't even call she just wrote me she said Sir rachel please you, you you will be leading us in the prayer section this morning and when i saw it i said oh prayer session this morning i said ah I don't even know the direction which prayer am i going to lead because there are some there are some uh, lines you connect to they said when you are when you are uh, just like apostle paul said when i'm in uh, when i see uh, as a jew i believe like a jew so when you are among there are some lines you connect to you know like me and that kind of a woman i love welfare prayers yes I love welfare prayers. So there are some lines where you connect to. Maybe in that kind of line, they don't like die, die, die. You will now begin to ask yourself, what, which kind of prayer point I will go and lead in this place now? And this line, maybe people don't like uh, enemy. This one, yes. Whether we like it or not, eh? the Bible says we rescue not against flesh and blood. So there are some environment you want to enter. When you want to enter that environment, you you yourself you is like you begin to ask yourself which direction will I go now? Which, which direction will I go? Which direction will I go? I was asking myself these questions that yesterday. Which direction will I go? Because I know the line I am connected to. Eh? I know the line that I am connected to. I say, Oh God, Spirit, I just say, Spirit of God, have your way, help me. But the next thing, eh, I add, go for healing. Just go for healing. Ask God, just go for healing. Just intercede. Just say, go, just go for healing. And do you actually know, and that was how I connected this morning to that line, and I led that prayer section of healing. And behold, somebody, immediately we finished that prayer. This same dickiness that called me yesterday, she wrote me on WhatsApp. She says, Tarache, oh my goodness, I don't even know what to say. Do you know that yesterday midnight, I almost called you to say, Rachel, please, a message just came that you should try to go for healing. You just, even if that is not your prayer point, but please, before the end of your prayer point, go for healing. Let's just pray for healing. When I saw the message, I look up, I look down. What am I trying to say? When you are lost as a child of God, you will know. When you are back, you will know. You will know. I heard it go for healing. I was throughout the night. I was saying, what will I do? Which prayer point? But it came, go for healing. And when I heard go for healing, I said, Thank you, Jesus. And the healing, she said immediately, and really immediately, I wanted to lead the prayer. She said immediately, I sang a song that said, Heliest, Heliest, the ends of Jesus, they are in. So when she even heard that healing alone, she said, Ah, God, you are in this place. She said she almost called me yesterday night to say, Please. No matter your prayer points, please go for healing. Let's still pray for healing. And she was so surprised from the beginning to the end. It was healing, healing, healing. That can only be God. And I return the glory back to God. What am I trying to say? We are in a dispensation, like I said. If you know that you are, oh, God bless you, minister. Oh, thank you, God bless you. If you know that you are dedicated to the cause, God can use anybody somebody god can still use any god is looking for vessels every day to use you understand like i will always say i i am that kind of a person i am sometimes i will always say i i always want to ask god the way forward that is me i am not after yes like i said i am a woman i pray welfare prayer very very well i don't joke with welfare prayer because the world we are into is a battlefield whether we like it or not 
But my own is that pray the prayer, it is God that will answer. But why am I coming in this direction? The best thing that you need this time around is for you to have a personal relationship with God. Be dedicated to the cause of God. And the Spirit of God will always speak to you. I will always tell you the way the Holy Spirit can speak to you might not be the way it will speak to me. But does the Spirit of God speak to you? When you sacrifice, when you pay the sacrifice, you are dedicated to the cause, to the mission that God has committed. I, there was a time, eh? I am telling us the fact. There was a time even me myself is like everything about my business is what I'm not saying. So that is why I will always say sometimes it's good to quickly do a self-examination and retrace yourself back before worldliness will get you lost. For me, I don't know about anybody. Like I will always say just Apostle Paul was saying. There are a lot of things that I've actually gone through that I will not just want my labor to be in vain. I am telling you this is live video. I am speaking to the whole world as I am talking tonight. But you that have known how far you have gone, don't allow anything to deprive you of your salvation because somebody be so dedicated i'm talking about dedication it is where you and i we are going to end on the last day that is what matters most like seriously it's not what we are saying today that is why the bible says don't worry and when i saw this verse he said it is not you that speak but the spirit of your father will speak at what through you so God has said go. And he said, and the brother shall deliver you up. He did not send any other person. Your brothers, your sisters. They will deliver you up. It could be your father, your mother. They will deliver you up now. Listen, I am reading from Matthew 10, 16 to 26. Minister, Minister Boss, F5, God bless you. Thank you very much. And he says, and the brother shall deliver you up. The brother to death. And the father, the child. The children shall rise up against their parents and then shall be put to war to death. And ye shall be hated by all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end, he that is being dedicated to the end, he that is being steadfast to the end, he that stand out to the end. The Bible says the same shall be what? Shall be saved. But when they persecute you, in one city this is where i'm coming from now when they persecute you in one city flee ye to another the bible says flee ye to another but do you know what before the persecution you might have been able to deliver what the lord have asked you to deliver you understand oh before the persecution you ask if i tell them the truth so because of that truth they will not begin to persecute you the bible says now go to another city but have they heard they have heard on the last day, they will not say they are ignorant about heaven is real, Evaya is real. So your own and my own is to be dedicated to the cause. It's, non, it's nothing about you. It is nothing about me. We need to remove self. And that is why I will always say, it's time we remove Christ's apostolic mission. It's time we remove redeem. It's time we remove OFM. It's time we remove... Um, Catholic. It's time we remove Jehovah Witness. It's time we remove deeper life. It's time we remove a mountain of fire. Let us all what I know in mountain of fire, in whatever, all what I know, what they are preaching. Everybody is preaching Jesus, right? Okay, this church will not say this one is fake. This one will not say this one doctrine. Cruci uh, uh, crucify this one doctrine. The main thing we stop that. The main thing we need to focus on is Jesus. Let us preach Christ and stop preaching church. And the word of the Lord is telling you and I tonight, all these things will happen. These things will not just happen. It is even your own brethren, your brother, your sister, your father, your mother, that will, that, that, that will push you, that will do all these things to you. But yet, the word of the Lord says, be what? Dedicated. So it's time we preach Jesus and no longer preach church. Let us be dedicated because really if we, are fo if we focus more on repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. If we focus more on eternal life, we focus more on heaven, we focus more on air fire. You will see nobody will say, I am Christ apostolic, I am OFM, I am redeemed, I am this, I am that. No, it is time that we make Jesus the center of our messages, not the church that you and I we are going to write. So we need to be dedicated to the cause of the pre of, of preaching what? Jesus. Preaching the gospel message. But when you are dedicated to it, the Bible says, remember, even if they persecute you in one place, they persecute you in one city, don't stop. Don't say, because of this one, I will no longer be dedicated, but rather, flee ye into another. 
For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man will do what? We come. It is enough for the disciples. He said the disciples is not his master, nor the servant about his Lord, somebody. This is the word of God for us. It is, it is enough for the disciples that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord. If they be have called by the master, now the master of the house of Bezibor, this was Jesus himself. This was Jesus himself. It is enough for the disciples, as it be of the master. They called Jesus a word that is using what the spirit of what visible. So also a lot of Christians today have been crucified. People will see all manners of things against you. We don't know the kind of spirit you are using. Like I said, it's even high time we focus more on ourselves. Oh. Eh, let us stop pointing accusation finger because at the end of it all, like I will always say, nobody will escape this judgment. It is only God that knows how He's going to judge everybody. I know of a truth, though we have false prophets, I know of a truth, though we have false ministers, I know of a truth, though we have fake pastors, fake what or fake whatever, fake, fake, but we still have genuine ones, we still have the real ones, we still have what the true ones. So it's time we need to focus more on Jesus. Our own is to preach it. Anyone that refuse to do it, even you and I, we refuse to do. God forbid. I pray that on the end, at the end of it, or oh God will not find us one thing. But the main focus is that our own is to preach Jesus to them. So anybody that not fails to repent, we saw what happened in Abraham's bosom between Lazarus and what the rich man. What did the rich man say to Father Abraham? He said, "Excuse me, Father Abraham. Let me go back there. I still have my sisters. I still have my brother. I still have my siblings. Let me just go back there and tell." Them Hey, this anguish is too much. Oh, I don't want them to come here. Father Abraham, please. What did Abraham say? What, 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 what was his reply? He said, we still have people there. If they refuse to listen, they will come here. So also, I don't know who is watching me tonight. See, the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. He that has ears, let him hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. He that has ears, let him hear. Jesus is coming again. And we that the Lord have redeemed, we that the Lord have saved, it's time we leave church out of it and begin to preach Jesus. Let us raise up the banner. Everybody must not believe in you. Everybody must not believe that you are carrying the Bible. That was one word our pastor says this evening that surprised me. Yes. And I even love those kind of challenges. There are people, maybe they are your friends before. You used to gossip with them right you used to do all manners of evil with them right yes by the time you are dedicated to the cause that god have laid in your hands they will always want to still be using that eye to look at you but you know that god have redeemed you you know that right now everything that matters most to you is god and god alone what do you need to do you need to focus like me now richard musa i spend my time wisely I, like I, I, I love using myself as an example. Before we even carry phone now to say I want to call somebody. As I'm sitting down here, I'm telling you, you know that maybe I have something very important to tell that person. Like seriously. Before I will pick up my phone to say I want to talk to somebody, just know that I have something important to say I want to speak to you. Because if we are not conscious of these things, we will not be able to live that life of perfection. I am telling us the fact. But me, before now, I can spend one hour, two hours, and I saw you see, and not be so you see, and I saw you see, and I saw I see, and not be so I see. We know these things. Like I said, when you are going wrong, you know. When you are on the right track again, you know. And being on the right track, like seriously, being on the right track, God will help us to live. See, I will always say, though we strive towards perfection, we don't have enemies to justify ourselves to say, I am the, I am the most holiest person. I don't have weakness. I am living in... It's a lie. Until that day, God will justify us. It is only God that will justify us that, yes, well done, good and faithful servant. But for the now, we all, we need to strive. But even as you are striving, you will know that you are pushing. You will know that you are pressing. Even God himself will know that, oh, this is my son, this is my daughter, she's striving. I don't pick up my, I, I am saying what I'm, I am, he said, he said, if I don't have anything to do, I'll go and sleep. I, I carry my laptop. That is it. You know, from one talk, enter another one. I don't, I spend my time wisely these days. He said, I will just go and be sleeping. I'll, I'll go sleep, better sleep. Or I just come to social media, I begin to busy with Facebook or, or other of my media platform. Instead of me to now begin to go and be talking what, what I don't supposed to talk. Minister, God bless you. So this is life for us. I'm talking about dedication. And maybe all those your friends that you are doing all those things with, 
You no longer flow with them like that. What will they say? Oli, oli, you want to do this one? That. Let them say you know yourself. Let them talk the talk. Leave them to keep talking the talk. Like I said, let them keep saying, seeing your past. Why you, you, you will keep pressing forward. A lot of them, they, 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 they hold on to the past of Apostle Paul. That was why I said I was so blessed in our meeting this evening. A lot of people might hold on to your past. Do you want to move forward? They want to drag you back. It is only when you, 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 you allow it. But when you are dedicated to the cause, you focus on your goal. Apostle Paul said, I now let go everything that is behind me. I put you behind me. I am pressing forward every day to reach for to the price of the money of the eye calling in Christ Jesus. So this is what I used to tell people. Don't even expect that your old friends will believe in you. Don't even expect that people around you will believe in you. When you are preaching the gospel, don't even expect that your own family will believe in you. Why? Because you will say, he, not be this our sister, this our brother, this our daughter, this our son. But don't let those things hold you back. Do you know what? Carry your Bible. Carry your Bible and press on. Move forward. Keep telling God it is you and you and you and you alone. And by so doing, God will just be using you to bless people. God will keep using you. And they themselves that are nailing you with, their, with your past, they will be there. Because I've come to realize one thing in life. People that talk about people, people that nail people for no just cause, like, they, like I will always say, they will just be there. But you, because you are not living your life freely, because of the gospel, you want to do what God has asked you to do. Eh? But you, you see, like I said, the, the, the Bible says the devil is the accuser of brethren. That was why I was so blessed tonight in that meeting. It's our time we need to let go of our past. And even if the, the, once a while, the devil will still want to continue to use your past, to remind you of your past. But tell the devil, shut up. You know about me yesterday. You don't know about me today. Somebody, it's time for you to rise up and be dedicated to the cause that God has called us for. Because the Bible is telling you and I tonight, it said, it is not, it is, they call Jesus, that is using the spirit of what? Beelzebub. And how much more shall they call them of his word? Also, so what do you not expect them to call you and I when they name Jesus all manners of name? But the Bible says, fear them not. The word of the Lord is telling us, fear them not. Fear them not, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and easy that shall not be known. So somebody, I am telling you tonight, fear them not. It doesn't really matter how many they are. Fear them not. It doesn't really matter how many they, 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 they are against you. Fear them not. It doesn't really matter how, how, how hard that the devil is trying to use your sin. Even if you have sinned this morning, before you are hearing the message, fear, fear them not. Even if you have sinned, one minute before you log into this platform, fear not. The Bible is saying now, fear them not. I don't know that thing that is still holding you back. Fear not. Fear not. It's time for you to raise up the banner. Thank God. He said, he who puts his hands in the floor and look back is not faithful. I'm talking about dedication. When you are dedicated to recourse, eh, you don't bloody care again what people think about you. That is why I love the book of Romans. Romans chapter 12. That says, ah, I am not, we, 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 I present my body now as a living sacrifice. I now, let's go to that book of Romans chapter 12. Though it's not, it's not part of my, my scripture tonight. I just pray the Holy Spirit of God will help me because of time. Because of time. You understand? Sometimes somebody, is time that you need to by yourself, tell yourself the truth. And I will always say the best part, the best truth you can tell yourself is you. Let me quickly go to that book of Romans for you to understand why the Bible is saying, fear them not. See, the Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, right? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the message of God that you present yourself, present your body as a what? A living sacrifice unto what? Unto God. Ha, Yarabosh. Unto God. Which is what your reasonable word service present yourself now as a living sacrifice. Do you know what it means to become a living sacrifice? We you know what you know what they call dead wood. Your body your body don't die, it don't die. People are just seeing that you are walking, but spiritually you are dead to the cause of the gospel, to the cause of the mission that God has committed into your hands. So when you already know that you is spiritually. Your spiritual life now is for God and God alone. No matter what our people look at you, no matter what they say about you, it will no longer matter. That was, I was just laughing this evening uh, in, in that our meeting. I said, wow, it seems as you people just peeped through my message tonight. So the Bible is telling somebody, fear them not. It doesn't really matter. Let it be whosoever that is against you. Fear them not. And one thing, 
I want to let us know the good news I have for us tonight. If God be for us, nobody can be against us. So if you don't be against yourself, nobody indeed can be against you. The word of the Lord says, fear them not, for there is nothing covered. So no matter what they think they are doing against you, one day, one day, it will be revealed. And if you are a child of God, you are dedicated to the things of God. God will continue to expose to you. God will continue to reveal to you. Because he said, fear them not. So no matter what they are doing to you, God will keep on revealing it to you. Because why? Now, God knows that even you yourself, you are dedicated to what is cause. What I tell you in darkness, that ye shall speak in light. And what you hear, that you preach upon the altar. So whatever God has, is putting in your mouth to speak, somebody, you are not the one that will speak it. Speak it boldly, the way it is. Nail it the way it is. Why? Because God is the one that is sending you on that errand. Be so dedicated to what, what God has asked you to do in this end time. Do it, not to glorify yourself, but to the glory of of God, and he repeated in verse 28 again. He said, And fear not them which kill the body. This is where a lot of us we are afraid. A lot of us we are so afraid of men, men. we are so afraid of people, we are so afraid of friends, families, eh? And we don't want to do what God has asked us to do. Why? Because you fear that they will persecute you, they will do what say manners of let them begin to talk. Do what God has asked you to do now. The Bible says, Fear them not which will kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both the body and soul in hell. So I have come to announce to somebody tonight. I want you to uh, in fact, if it's to rededicate yourself tonight, you can rededicate everything back to God and say, Father, ah, I never knew it like this. Like I said, forget about what you have done this morning money don't allow the devil to remind you of your sin of this morning don't allow the devil to remind you of your sin of this afternoon and it might not be easy the moment you try to do it it might not be easy but like i said don't worry allow the holy spirit of god to take over allow the power of god to take over you will start seeing you god will begin to use you to change life to change destiny to transform people you will sit down you will sit back to send and say ah god I, it's not you that is doing it we don't have power of our own. It is not you, somebody. It is just a spirit of God that is empowering you. The Holy Spirit of God that has become the active force in the inside of you. That is now working through you. But it cannot work if you don't dedicate yourself. It cannot work if you don't say, Father, here I am, use me. Like I will always say, don't focus on Daddy Gio Adeboye. Don't focus on Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Don't focus on Paul and Eche. What these men are doing today, they are all these men, they are already going there. Eh? They have done their part. What about you and I? What are you there? What have you done? I am asking you, do you know a lot of life that, that the Jew have transformed? Do you know a lot of life that, that the Jew have touched? Do you know a lot of life? Do you know what that man have done? For the kingdom of God, do you know how many souls he has won? What have you done? I am asking you somebody tonight. So it's time that we, we don't begin to look at these generals. These generals, they are going every day. Before now, if Daddy Gio want to minister, before now, he, he, he don't used to sit down. But in the last program they just held, in the last glory wave, he sat down in, in, in his ministration. So even himself is getting old. This, this men that we are looking onto, they are, they are getting old. So if we don't prepare ourselves, if, if Jesus tarry, God can still use you. They pay the sacrifice. They pay the sacrifice for it. You and I, it's time we set ourselves apart. Dedicate yourself. God can use you to wrought miracles. Even more than Apostle Joseph Sunday, man, I'm telling us tonight, it is all about dedication. It is all about dedication. And the greatest miracle that God can use you to do in the life of somebody is for you to win a soul. The greatest miracle God can use you to affect a life positively is for that soul and that one soul that the devil was about to take to a fire. It's for you to remove that soul from the kingdom of darkness and says, a devil, you have no say about this soul. This soul belongs to God because I know even me myself was not qualified, but Jesus died for me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son because I believed and today I have been redeemed. So devil, this soul does not, is a miracle for you to save one soul, for you to preach and somebody is a, is the greatest miracle. All come. Is there anywhere it is written in the scripture that ever rejoice over one crippled man? Eh? Over one. Yes, these things are good. There are signs, they are miracles. But the Bible says, ever rejoice over one soul that repents. That in 99. Hey! 
every repair, every rejoice over one soul. There are people because they are crippled. There are people because they are blind. There are people because they want something from God. They don't finish in an atmosphere of miracle. Their own is just to go and get the miracle and they go back and continue in their old ways. Why there are still some people that their own is just to receive Jesus. So if God can use a, a, a man of God to heal the blind, to heal the cripple, and, and the intention of that cripple is just to go back again, to continue after the healing, he, he, you that God has used to save a soul and the soul accepted Jesus as a Lord and personal Savior and you do your follow up and you make that and you make sure that that soul is living in accordance to the word of God let me tell you something you are greater than that great man of God that eat the eyes of the blind that eat the cripple that open the ear and those people they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are not in fact they are still in darkness I am telling you somebody tonight I am telling you so the word of the Lord is saying fear them not don't be afraid any longer. Do what God has asked you to do. Be dedicated to this cause. And God can use you to work miracles. Remember, I will always tell us, the Bible says, greater works than this shall you and I do. But we must start it. We must start from somewhere. Don't look down on yourself. God bless you all. God bless you all. So I'm still talking about dedication. So from every of the uh, Bible verse we read tonight, we can see it that dedication, simply put it, is the yielding desire, the yielding, desi the, the yielding desire in the Christian believer that makes them to put in every effort. We put in every of our effort at all costs to ensure that the work or the assignment that God has given to us is completely done. We don't do it halfway. The work of God, the business of God that he has commissioned into our hands is not to be done halfway. Apostle Paul, after he fought, after he finished his course, he said to himself, Ah, I have finished my course. I have fight a good fight of faith. Now anything can happen. As you and I are here tonight, if rapture come this night, are you sure that we are going to have credit in heaven? I leave that question with you. I leave that question with myself. It's a question we need to ask ourselves. If the trumpet sound now, are you sure you and I we will rapture? Are you sure that we will have credit before God? These are the questions that we need to ask ourselves. That is why I said it's time we focus more on ourselves. Oh, because sometimes the judge, the way men see that is not how God we judge in the, uh, at the end of age. So I want us that the business of God is not for us to live halfway. It is Jesus completed his own. Jesus did it to the end. Majority of the apostles we are seeing today, they finished their course. They did it. They finished their course. They paid their price to the end. Each and every one of, of them. Stephen was stoned to death. As we all know, they stoned Stephen to death. They stoned him to death. So a lot of them went through all these things in order for their ministry to be in order for them to fight a good fight of faith. So you need to be dedicated. And once you are dedicated to the cause, to the mandate, to the mission that God has committed you from, that, you, that is the beginning of fighting the good fight of faith, like I will always say. But I pray that God will give us the grace to fight it to the end in the name of Jesus. See, one thing I want to let us know is this. Whether others retire or they are getting tired, it must not be you, it must not be me. Like seriously. Whether people are doing it or not, let it not be none of your business. Like I said, do your part and let me do my part. So whether others are looking back, it must not be you, it must not be me that will look back. Let's pay the sacrifice. Do you know why I said we should pay the sacrifice? I said it earlier on. There are a lot of people today, they visit uh, Babalawo, they visit native doctor, they visit all manners of altars, evil altars I mean. They visit all manners of uh, uh, fake a, a, a prophet or whatsoever. There are people that are paying sacrifice. They, 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 they will tell them, go and bring 20 million. Go and bring 30,000. Go and because why? They want to make money. Because why? They just want fame. Because why? They want to be popular. Because why? They want to be known. You understand? These are sacrifices to pay. But I want to tell you that if all these people can be paying all these sacrifices like this, I am telling you, child of God, if you sincerely pay the sacrifice to dedicate yourself to the cause, to the mission of God, eh? I, 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 like I said earlier on, God will use us for signs and wonders. And we are getting there. If Jesus is sorry, we all, we are getting there in the name of Jesus. So whether people are getting tired or not, let it not be you, let it not be me. We need to stand out. We should what? Stand out. According to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13. Time will not permit me to begin to read the scriptures any longer. According to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13. Now we need to what? Stand out. Actually, it is the, it is the will now for us to pray more. As a child of God being dedicated, you need to pray more, you need to fast more, you need to watch. You don't just pray, but you watch and you pray. 
You understand? You watch and you pray. And as well, you need to die daily for Christ. You need to die daily for Christ. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, that says that we should pray with what? Uh, pray without what? Season. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31, as well. On your own, just go through these scriptures and you will see what the word of the Lord is telling each and every one of us. It is a godly desire to keep what? Pressing forward. Let nothing hold you back. Let nothing hold you back. Let nothing hold you back. I am telling you, a lot of things will come up that will really want to hold you back. And that is why the Bible says it is not from evil people that are not far. People that are close. Discouragement will come. Because the devil himself knows that if he wants to use people that don't even know you, you will not be discouraged. You say, I beg you, this one not know me. But there are people that are even close that ah, when they will do you the thing, the devil will know that oh, you'll be done. But I'm telling you, somebody, let nothing hold you back. Press on, press forward, be dedicated to the business of God that He has called us. Let's be dedicated to the business of God that He has called us into. It's a godly desire to creep to keep in fact pressing forward. Press forward. No matter what, run with patience. The race. Let us run with the patient. Run with patience. The race that God has set before us until our victory is sure at the last day. Now, our victory has already been won. But for the victory to be sure, it will not be at the sound after rapture. The victory has already been won for each and every one of us. So we must keep pressing forward. We must keep pushing through what dedication. We need to be dedicated. Like I said, the business God has given unto us is not to be done halfway, but rather to be completely done. It's a business to be completely done, not halfway. Not halfway at all. So we need to put in our best. We need to put in our work, our time, our energy. Whatever it takes. Like I said, even when you are doing these things, people will crucify you, nail you. But don't worry. Keep the focus for Jesus. Just keep pressing on. Just keep looking at Jesus as the author and the finisher of your faith. And I am telling you, at the end of it all, he's going to tell you, well done, good and what? Faithful servant. So the race that is set before you and I, let us run, let, let us run with patience. Uh, 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 Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Philippians chapter 3, 13 to 14, Hebrews 12, verse 1. And as well, knowing that that race is now, you need, is, is for a short while. The race that is set before us is just for a short while. It's just like an 100 meter dash. It is just like an 100 meter dash. But whether we like it or not, is what is a marathon. We are on a marathon, just like a 100 meter dash. So we must run this race through what patience. That is why you need to be dedicated. So now, if you know what you are dedicated to, it will help you to run the patience, the, the race patiently. So we know now that all our cause, all our life is to live for Christ and Christ alone. To live for the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Live it for God. This is the best thing we can do for God. Nothing more, nothing less. Like I always say, the best thing we can do for God is to go out there. Anyhow you want to do it, do it. I will always tell us, you might not be the type that love people seeing you on, uh, on camera, but keep doing. Do it anyhow you want to do it, provided you are doing what? Preaching what? The gospel. Like seriously, this is what I will always tell a lot of people. Now, dedication call for self-discipline because why when you don't discipline yourself there is no way you will be able to do what be dedicated to the cause that is said before you it's causing now for 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 for, for self-discipline dedication calls for a high degree of self-discipline or control when others want to quit you will tell yourself no even when it looks as if the strength is not there holy spirit of god empower me i will not give up i will not quit even when others quit you will not do what you will not quit. Why? Because you are dedicated to a cause. You are dedicated to a cause. Knowing that winners don't quit, but rather winners do what? Winners don't quit. And winners we always what? Win. Winners don't quit. And quitters don't win. Winners don't quit. Quitters don't win. So when you quit, even when the battle is not over, God forbid, air fire. So don't quit. I don't pray for it. Sometimes we see how this summer the heat is. Imagine how a fire will look like somebody. We sometimes, if we are feeling it, our body is hot. Imagine how a fire will look like. Every day, let's begin to pray for ourselves. For 
that at the end of it all we will not be found one thing. By the time we know these things, it will help us to live a good life. Mama Susanna, God bless you. Now I'm seeing your right up. Oh. I've not been seeing anything since on this camera. So, like I said, don't quit. God bless every one of you for your thumbs up, even those that are watching on the ground. God bless you all. I know that a lot of people are there. But what am I trying to say? Let's be dedicated. And the only thing we need dedication for is not worldly pleasure. It's not worldly pursuit. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and every other thing shall be added. Yes, whether you hate me for it, you don't love me for it, God will love me. God will love me. But I must tell us the truth. Let it be God and God alone. Every other thing will fall in place, whether we like it or not. Somebody, it is where our soul will end up on the last day. Let it be what matters most. Like I will always say, that does not mean we should not work. That does not mean we should not do other things. But let God be the ultimate. That is why it will, not, it will no longer be vanity upon vanity, cost to vanity. Why? Because God is the center of it all. Somebody. I said it earlier on, a lot of people pay sacrifice because they want to get fame, because they want to be known, because they want to get rich, fast track. But let, let, it, don't be, let us not be like them. The little that God gives to us, let us keep appreciating God every day. Godliness with contentment is a great gain. By the time you keep appreciating God for that little, and God knows it that, oh, this is my son, this is my daughter. If God is giving me little, and at the end of it all, I make heaven. It's much more better than a man or a woman that is having trillions or billions. And at the end of it all, that man will go and end up in air fire. God knows our capability. So don't look down. Whatever comes your way, give thanks. Thank God. This is how I live my life. I don't live my life to begin to carry a potential. Why? Because I know that there is a cause before me. I know that there is a, a race before me. I don't want anything to talk me out of it. That is why I said, it is you that can tell yourself the best who you are. Apart from God, it is you. It is you. Nobody else. You understand? Nobody else. Somebody. Nobody else. So this is the self-discipline. I am saying, I'm stop people. God bless you all. This is the self-discipline I am talking about tonight. Self-control. Self-control. Where others give up, you don't give up for, the, for your father's business. Where others quit, you don't quit. Like I always say, there are some people, maybe any little thing will happen, they will say, no, me, I will not go to church again. But don't quit, oh, don't quit on Jesus. You might decide to say, me, I don't want to go to this church again. But that, oh, that local assembly again. But don't stop. Don't stop, but don't quit on Jesus. That is where it will now become a very bad thing. You understand? It will now become a very bad thing. I, I, I used to tell some people, and sometimes let us not easily just back up like that, or back out, or quit like that. The race that we are running, we need to run it with what? With patience. This is a simple, this is naked truth. It's just a fact. We need to run this race with what? With patience. So, therefore, I will always tell people a champion that is a champion is the one that remains fighting consistently. We all we are champions for Jesus. That is why we are ambassadors for Christ. We need to be consistent. We need to be dedicated to keep what fighting, fighting, press forward, press forward until the battle is over. We must fight it to the end. On your own, you can kindly please read the book of Romans, Romans chapter eight, verse thirty-seven to thirty-nine. Philippians chapter 1 verse 27. Dedication. We must have control over our passion. To be dedicated to this cause, we must have control over our passion, over our tongue, and above it all, over our flesh. If we must finish well, and if we must finish strong, we must have control over our tongue. Because the Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. So we must have control over what? Our tongue, over our flesh, over our passions. A lot of us, we are so passionate about, uh, yeah, about the things of the world. A lot of us, we are so passionate about things that does not matter. Things that will only end here. Somebody be so zealous. I will always tell people, if you want to be drunk, be drunk in the Holy Ghost. If you want to be drunk, be drunk in the things of God. Let it be the thing. Yes, even when you are, like I, I tell a lot, when you are doing all these things, people will think you are doing it for a show off. And if you are doing it for a show off, you will not be able to bless anybody. I am telling you, whatever you are doing for God, that you are doing it for a show off, you might even end up blessing people and those people will not know that you are doing it for a show off. But you that is doing it for a show off, you will not get blessed. You will not get blessed. And God forbid, the, and God forbid about it, if rapture sounds, now air fire. But you have been able to bless people. So you know, like I always say, if you are dedicated, I'm talking about dedication.
must be dedicated to the cause, the ministry of reconciliation. Be among the few that God will use in this end time. Be among the voice that will speak life, minister life to people in this end time. God can use you. God is looking for people every day. Looking, I will, is still waiting for that man, that, that woman that is still in the club as yesterday. That we watch this video and say, oh, I never knew it. I thought that if I come back to Christ, God will not be able to use me. Eh? Or you that have been in the feed and you have been looking down on yourself. God is still looking for that arm robber yesterday that went to rob yesterday night. He's still waiting for that arm robber right now. That will say, oh, I just heard this message. I thought because I was already robbing, you will no longer accept me. But here I am. I want to drop this gun and let me save you. Eh? And sometimes we look at prostitution, arm robber, as if these things are people that will go to a fire. What about those little, little things that we think it does not matter? According to the book of Galatians chapter 5, those little, little things that we think that it does not matter. Eh? But it matters most to God. We need to rededicate ourselves. We need to say, he said, let us, let, I just want us to go back to a drawing board. Let us redraw it again. He said, I am holding this word against you. Go back to your first love for Christ and keep burning for God. There is nothing more we can do for God. Like I said, if you win five souls and those souls enter heaven, it's better than that big man of God that he the blind, that he the deaf, that he the lame, that do all manners of miracle. And that man died. And at the end of it all, the, uh, the, uh, the, the Bible will say, Go away, I know you not. It is only God that knows how this judgment will be. So you that you just focus more on the Great Commission. And I pray that as we dedicate ourselves to this cause, God will give us the grace to be able to end where. Mean, preach to people. Anyhow you want to do it. Like I said, you can decide to go on one-on-one -on -one evangelism. You can decide to speak to people through WhatsApp. You are the one doing it. But the Holy Spirit of God will do the finishing. But one thing is to say, here I am, Lord. Send me. Here I am. I'll go. Whether you are, grad you, 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 you are a graduate or not, this thing does not count. Like seriously. But say, here I am. Use me. And God will use you. The Holy Spirit of God is always there. He said, if anyone lack wisdom, what did the Bible say? It said, ask of the Father that giveth liberally to what? To all men. To all men. So God is still waiting for each and every one of us. But let us dedicate ourselves back to Christ. Those of us that have already been to it, in any areas of our shortcoming, let's just say, Father, I'm rededicating my, myself back to you. Help me. Help me. Let your will alone be done. In my life and God will use each and every one of us so like I said dedication calls for self-discipline it will help you even to discipline yourself now we have to be, be, be watch our passions what are those things that you are passionate about yes it's good we have goals it's good we have dreams it's good we have desire but don't be carried away by those things but do we need these things like I will always say yes we need them just a lot of us we have done our businesses today, even before coming to this platform. A lot of us, you have gone out, you have gone to work. A lot of us, we have done one or two things. Yes, find our good. It's like, give us these days our what? Our daily bread. We still go for our daily bread. That does, being dedicated to the cause of uh, the gospel does not mean you should not go after your daily bread. But what I'm trying to say, focus more on the things of God. Put him first and let him by himself lead you. And see, when you put God first, even if you are a, a businesswoman, when you put God first, God will tell you what to do. I am telling you the fact. That is why me. Thank God uh, uh, some of my downline, they are watching me. Some of my business partners, they are watching me. They know. The business I'm into, I know they carry a dick put. I know they carry a blood pressure. I know they carry a protection. No, never. Let, let the will of God be done. Anyhow God wants it to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Like seriously. And like I will always say, God has been faithful. Sometimes, you see the time I do my live video in the night. Because sometimes I, I, I take a look at my schedule throughout the day. I'm always busy. So I rather prefer after every one of my meeting. Uh -huh, let me go and do my live video. But God knows that I have put him first. There is a song I used to sing in Bini language that says, Ika wogo sane, Ika wogo sane o, Ika wogo sane o, Ite. Iga wogo sanera o, 
Ike ke me soa o sara wo go me me Right so when you put God first he knows how to take care of you So let us not be too carried away it is not all that glitters that is gold dedicate everything about you to Jesus and he knows how to take care of you somebody I am telling you the fact it is not all that glitters that is gold a lot of us we want to be like a lot of people not knowing that even those people that want to be like a lot of them are having one issue or the other that they are going through that they cannot even share with anybody don't compare your life with anybody live the life that God wants you to live and, 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 and learn how to appreciate God there are a lot of people we don't know what they are going through every day in their life yes I am telling us the fact things are happening it's not all that is glit all that glitters that is gold so examine yourself dedicate yourself everything about you that is why I love that song that says simply devoted to you oh Lord I lose my life to follow you Jesus the life that I live is not I that live for me to live is Christ I lose my life everything to follow you Jesus that is dedication so any it wants to be let it be any it wants to be let it be and if God knows that ah sees your heart like I will always say you will always end well and I too we end well in Jesus' name. So dedication calls for self-discipline. We need to discipline ourselves. We must have to control. Control your passions. Control your passions. Don't be too carried away by your passions. We need to control our passion, our tongue, and above it all, our flesh. If we must finish strong and if we must end well. So on our own, we see Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. Proverbs 16, 32. James 3, verse 2. And Romans 6 verse 12. As I draw the curtain here, I will read all the scriptures for us for you to understand what I want to conclude about. First and foremost, Proverbs, it might be a familiar scripture, but let us hear the word of God as we call it a day. I just come by today by the special grace of God. The, the, the word of God is reminding you and I again that we need to be what? Dedicated. Let us redraw our curtain. Yes, like I said, let's not be too carried away by worldly pursuit or by worldliness. By so doing, you will have enough time to always hear from God. Whenever God is looking for you, eh? Or whenever God wants to speak to you. Eh? A lot of us, we are busy, busy, busy. We cannot even hear from God again. Why? Because we are so busy. God is looking. Anytime God is uh, want to speak, eh? God is always there. He's always there. So whenever He wants to speak, he, he, you are nowhere to be found. Busy, 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 busy. Sometimes it's good that you have a personal time with God. Uh, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. The Bible says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, eh? The end thereof is destruction. So we must watch our passion. I'm telling us the truth. Me, don't be too carried away by things that does not matter. I am telling you. Because the Bible says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. The end thereof is what? Destruction. That is Proverbs 16 verse 32. So let us watch our ways. Let us watch our ways. Watch those things that we do. What's those things that we do? And I know as a true child of God, like I said, if you dedicate your, 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 yourself to your father's business, God can never leave you, neither forsake you. Never, never, never. It might look as if things are not working, but everything will work perfectly together for what? For your good. Let's see James chapter 3, verse 2. You know, sometimes they will say, church, church, church. Not only church, 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 church. Now you sabi. Now today, pray, 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 pray. Now you sabi. Now God, 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 now you sabi. Leave them, sabian. Eh? Sabian like that. Just keep sabi it like that. Let them keep saying the word that they are saying. You too keep sabi, sabi. Eh? A lot of people can even begin to mock you. You pray too much, you do this too much, this one. But still, don't worry. The end will justify the means. Don't worry. Eh? James chapter 3 verse 2. For in many things we offend all. For if any man offend not in word, in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. So that is why I said we must control our tongue. Yes, this is what I'll be praying that God will help me to do. And God has really been helping me out. So by the time you control what comes out of your mouth, what you say, you will see you'll be able to control everything about your system, about your body. Like seriously. 
That is why I said it earlier on that the Bible says that the power of life and, and, and death is in the tongue. So once we know how to bear it, sometimes, it's not sometimes, we cannot do those things on our own. Except through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And that is why you must dedicate yourself. Pay the sacrifice. Have sweet fellowship with the Spirit of God. And it will help you. It will also help me in Jesus' name. So the Bible is telling us that a man that can control his words, a man that can control his tongue, that same man can be a perfect man. And the man will be able to bridle his whole body. Everything about your body now, you will be able to control it. I'm just trying to break it down for us. The area where we need to control like i said we control our passion we will control our tongue and as well we control our flesh so finally let's look at romans chapter 6 verse 12 romans 6 verse 12 god bless you thank you very much i'll be calling it a day now romans chapter 6 verse 12 oh hallelujah let me use uh okay yes romans 6 verse 12 let's see what the bible says in romans 6 12 and the word of the Lord is verse 12. Let not sin, let not sin, therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the laws thereof. This is the word of God for us. Let not sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lost what thereof. Like I said, we must be self-disciplined to our passions. We must be self-disciplined to our tongue. And above it all, our flesh. That is what Romans chapter 6 verse 12 is now telling us. That we should do what? Allow sin not to reign. Is it that we, we, we don't still have our shortcoming? Is it that we, we are not still having the areas where we are not doing it well? But above it all, let's just keep saying, Father, help me. On my own, I cannot help myself. That is why we have the Holy Spirit. On our own, we cannot really help ourselves. God bless you, Mama. Love it, every one of you. Thank you for your comment. I see all your comments. I will respond to it later. God bless you all. On our own, we cannot do it on our own. But when we say, Father, here I am, and cannot, there comes a time in my life, I love, because thank God when God is sending you on an errand, that is why you must have a story to tell. You must have something to tell. Why? Because you have gone through it before. I know a lot of things that have actually happened to me. But here I am today. I am thanking God. Even in the era, like I said, in the era of my shortcomings, there comes a time I was no longer, it's like I was, I, 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 I was, it's not, it, let, because by the time you start seeing that things that are not supposed to uh, uh, happen to you, uh, I, I've started, uh, those things will now begin to happen to you. You now need to do what? Self check yourself. Am I still in the faith? That was what happened to me. And I, I, I asked myself, am I still in the faith? For these things to, to, to be happening to me that's supposed not to happen. Am I still in the faith? But what do I need to do? I cried back to God, Father, help me. I cannot help myself. So sometimes when we try to, when we, when we try to do it on our own, it might not work. It might not work. Why? The Holy, that is why we have the Spirit of God. You have the power of God in the inside of you. And it will, it will work it out. My love, that God bless you and also with you. It will work it out. So let's just try to dedicate ourselves. This dedication is broad. Rededicate yourself back to the fellowship with the Holy Spirit, to the Great Commission, to what God has asked you to do. I don't know that thing that God has been telling you to do. And you have been feeling reluctant about it. I am telling you now, go ahead. Go ahead and do it for your, for your Father, which is in heaven. You might, sometimes there are some things I want to do. I don't look at it whether people support me or not. That is me. Like I said, this ministry, there is this ministry, I run it with Mama Susan Aga. It's me and Mama Susan Aga that started this ministry. You understand? Except the days that she's at work, that is the day I will not see her on this live video. And when I see it in her, sometimes I will tell her, Mama, it's time for our church. This is our church in Facebook. Eh? It's me and Shio that is, that is doing it. And God sees that is me and she. But what am I trying to say in essence? Sometimes you might not even want, have one per single person at all. But I am telling you, if it's God that is sending you, and it's God that is sending us, He said, go, 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 and I will be with you, lo, even to the end of age. God must definitely stand by you. You can never be alone. As a child of God, if God is sending you, you can never ever be alone. And that is why God will always send men to assist you in the work that he has commissioned into what? Into your hands. 
So the first thing is that I am ready to go. And every one of us must be ready to go because it is a mandate that has been given to each and every one of us. So don't despise the days of your little beginning. After this live video, do not despise the days of your little beginning. Like I said, I have always, even developed that, that passion, that habit to support people, especially those that are doing it on media. I will support. Like I said, is, uh, is it not Bible that a person is preaching? You preach it. Like I said, you see a lot of men of God today. Whether we like it or not, it's not a lot of. It's not everybody that go to church. Everybody that say I am a, I, I, I am a Christian, or rather, I receive Jesus as my Lord, a personal Savior. It's not everybody that we go to heaven, whether we like it or not. That is why the Bible says, at the end of it all, our walk will pass through fire. At the end of it all, I will tell. I will tell a lot of them, go away. I know you not. So, but I pray. That on that day we will not be those that God will say, go away, I know you not. So don't despise the days of your what? Little beginning. Start today, start today. And if you are watching this video, you've not accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, kindly please, kindly please, Jesus love you. He does not want any soul to perish. You can still dedicate yourself to God and God will use you mightily, even more than Apostle Paul in the Bible. Yes, it is possible. All you need to do is to say, Father, I am dedicating myself to you now. I surrender everything absolutely back to you. So I will be leaving us with some, with some Bible verses. Mama Susanna, you can help me write it. I will be leaving us with some Bible verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Because being dedicated to a good cause is not a sin, but become what is a blessing. When you dedicate to your father's business, it's a blessing. Out of Apostles chapter 4, verse 19 to 20, it pays to be incurable lawyer to the cause of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It pays. You might look at it that, oh, what I'm, what I'm doing is not reading meaning to people. It's a lie. What you are doing is blessing people. So long you did not dilute the word of God, you preach it raw the way it is. It will bless people and it will continue to bless people in the name of Jesus. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 1, remain ever focused. When you remain ever focused, it goes a long way to your Christian pilgrimage. Uh, pre uh, pre I mean, it goes a long way to your Christianity journey. Why? Because heaven is your focus. You don't want to miss it at the last day. By so doing, you don't want to miss heaven at the last day. You will keep seeing yourself, you are pushing and you are pressing, getting into perfection gradually and gradually and on that day God will justify your perfection like I said no man has a, has a, a, a cause to justify him, him or herself you cannot say I'm the most holiest person even Jesus when they called him good master he, he, he replied we know the reply when they call him what good master so but just, let's just keep striving and keep pushing at first Peter chapter 1 verse 13 we as sober Christians must re be ready to persevere to the end because dedication is all about perseverance somebody dedication is just all about patience dedication is just all about endurance because if you don't persevere you don't endure you might not end well and i, I don't pray it for you and i don't pray it for me but no matter what we see may god give us the grace to persevere to be able to end well in jesus name our uh, revelation chapter 3 verse 11 our dedication is so important that the Lord himself has to sound an adverse warning concerning it. So let us yield to it. Oh, Mama, I love it. God bless you. This is how God does his things. That is how you know people that are having passion and zeal for the things of God. She's just operating the way I operate. Sometimes I love writing so much. Whenever I see... A, 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 a video provided I know that they are preaching about Jesus so uh, so far I know saying that Jesus I yesterday they preach or I love writing that is what she, that is how you, you know people that are zealous about the things of God they don't just come and begin to look eh they don't just come just this I think this is the first time I'm seeing Mama love it on my Bible study uh, on my Simon hour this is the first time I'm seeing her on the Simon hour but she just show who she is to the world. And she just proved who she is. This is how you know people that are passionate about the things of God. Like seriously, she's just like me. I cannot go to somebody's live video and I am watching. I will just be there. Lie, lie. Is it possible? It's not Rachel Musa. Except if I am doing something. It's not me. So mama, God bless you. More grace. That is me. Or sometimes you see me, I go to church. Maybe I go to an uh, invitation. Here I am. It's, no, it's not somebody that will tell you, ah, this woman like music. It's not like this woman love music. Because what you are, eh? I, I keep telling people, whatever you are, you cannot hide it. 
Whatever you are, you cannot hide it. No matter how you try to pretend. That is me. There are some things that happens to me sometimes. I will say this thing, I will not do it again. This thing, I will not do it again. It's a lie. I will not be able because that is not who I am. That is not the real me. That is not the real me. Yes. Our pastor was praying uh, 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 some kind of series of prayer yesterday. He said, Father, help us to begin to manifest the real me. It's, still, it's a very good prayer for every one of us. A lot of us, we are manifesting things that we are not. Why? Because of maybe what we have gone through. Our experience. Things that we have gone through in life. Eh? A lot of us, yes, we are manifesting things that we are not. Because why? We have made up our mind. We don't cross our mind saying, I swear I want one. There is a way that Simeon tried unto a man the end of his destruction. It's time that we, 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 we go back to our drawing board. Manifest the real you. No matter what you are going through, manifest the real you. Be who you are. Don't allow the things of the world. Don't allow what you are going through. Flesh and situations of life to not begin to, uh, to allow you manifest who you are not. So even that prayer point, I love it so much. Father, help me to manifest who I am. Who, who I am. The real me. Help me. So this is what the world, the world at large, as a child of God, they are waiting to see the manifestation of God through you and I. I am telling us the fact. That is why I love the Bible scripture that says, Let your light so shine before men that they will see your good work and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light so shine. So, wherever you are as a child of God, represent. People will say you are too fast forward. You are not too fast forward. I am telling you. Because that is who you, that is who you are. Wherever you are as a child of God, represent. People will say you, you, you want to do show off. Like we normally used to say, you will not hear some people will say, ah, maybe you, 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 you want to do it that you know it more than other people. It's a lie. Our father's business is for everybody. How you work, now so God go to, go to pay you. They know they say, I don't know. I, I, even me myself, I don't, I don't know where all these things are coming from. Yes, they exist. But for me, I, I, I don't normally believe on these things. Because that, that is not who I am. And I don't even have the thought. So people will always say, I too know, over Sabi, you want to do competition, you want to do this, leave it, it's your father's business. Wherever you are, somebody represents as a child of God, as a light. The Bible did not say, let your light so shine, that they will not see. It said, but let your light so shine before men, that they will see your good work. That is, you are a light. You are a light. So wherever you are, represent your papa. Represent, you are not representing yourself, you are representing Jesus. Let them know that, ah, I am a carrier. Of God's presence, the power of God, the Spirit of God walketh in the inside of me. I'm not just saying it, people will be seeing the manifestation. You don't just say it, but people will see the manifestation. Yes, sometimes you don't need to speak it out, but your actions, your character, your attitude will tell who you are to the world. So that is just what our mama just demonstrated. Mama, I love it. Alfred, God bless you. So you cannot be among brethren and you say, I, I, I don't want people to. No. What, like I said, whatever gift God has given to you, dedicate yourself to that talent, to that gift. Your calling. So dedication. Dedicate yourself to that gift that God has deposited in the inside of you. Dedicate, de dedicate yourself to that talent. Dedicate yourself to the great commission. And I pray as we do, God will give us all the grace to be able to end well in Jesus' name. So Revelation chapter 3 verse 11 I would love to read the scripture. I will not go without reading Revelation 3.11. This is, I, I wanted to close before, but I want to read the scripture for us. Revelation 3 verse 11. God bless every one of you that stayed to the end. Even those that could not stay to the end, I understand. I understand. People, uh, uh, although I'm not, uh, I will hear people will say, especially in YouTube, you want to preach, they will say, do it small. They're not, they say small. Preach it the way the spirit of God. Whatever God has given to you, do it. That is why sometimes I don't love others. They are YouTube, uh, Simon. You don't do it because you want people to, to view, because you want much viewer, or because you want to receive money. Let's know how to, how to do things that at the end of it all, God will not be angry. Even if I want to go to YouTube now, I can do a video of one hour, two hours. It not consign me. You understand? But all the same, at the end of it all, let the name of the Lord be glorified. People that still want to watch that video from beginning to the end, they will watch. They will watch. So it is not all about what we want to use the name of the Lord. A lot of us, we are using the, 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 the name of God to do kalo kalo. There is God though. I started to talk my own. There is God though. Yes. There is God. 
So let's know how we how, how we do these things. And at the end of it all, we will not do it and go outside of it. But rather, we are seeing. We are seeing. Let's do it moderate. Everything in life is moderate. At Revelation chapter 3, verse 11, let's see what the Bible says. The word of the Lord says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast that which thou art. Let no man take your crown. Somebody, I leave you with these words tonight. Be dedicated to the cause of your father. Be so dedicated. Let no man take your crown. The word of the Lord is telling us tonight. Thank you, mommy. Oh, uh, God bless you. Mommy, love it. God bless you. You see? Ha. I, when I see people that have passion for God, I know them. God bless you, ma. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. More grace as well to you. More grace. Ma Susanna, she's thanking you. God bless you. The Bible says, Behold, I come quickly. Oh, that fast which thou art. So I don't know what God has given to you. I don't know that thing that God has deposited in the inside of you. I don't know that area that God wants you to do something for him. I don't know that area that God just wants you to be dedicated. But the word of the Lord is telling you and I, hold it fast. Last week we saw the parable of the, the stewardship. We saw those that, uh, 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 what happened to the one. Their master gave them 5,000. Uh, the other one that he gave 2,000. And the other one that he gave 1,000. We saw what happened. So this is what Revelation is telling us tonight. Revelation 3, 11. Somebody, all that which has been given to you by God. Hold it strong. Let no man take your crown. The devil is fighting every day to see that a lot of us, we will lose our crown. But I'm telling you somebody tonight, you will not lose your crown. I will not lose my crown. Only if you hold it fast. So hold it fast. Be so dedicated to the cause or to the ministry that God has commissioned into your hands. And the best ministry, like I said, is the ministry of reconciliation. Hold it fast and the end. And at the end, you will wear your crown and I will wear my crown. No man will take our crown in the name of Jesus. Luke 9.51. Let us learn from our Lord Jesus as a perfect example. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. God bless you, wonderful people of God. As many of you that have joined me, God bless you. Thank you, thank you. I really appreciate you all. As usual, uh, is every Tuesday from 9 o'clock. And as well, on my YouTube channel, I have an hour of prayer every Friday, by the special grace of God, 5 to 6. I will always share it on my timeline. Wherever you are as a child of God, let people know that you are a carrier of God's presence. Let them know. Scream it loud. What happened to Zacchaeus? Like I said, there are some things you don't, you, 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 you don't say in the open. There are some things we do secretly. We, why, why there are some, somebody, whether we like it or not, we must do it what openly. It's just the fact. Just like the story of Zacchaeus. Even when they say, Zacchaeus, shut up. He said, I'm not going to shut up. When they say, Zacchaeus, close your mouth. He said, I'm not going to close my mouth. Zacchaeus, don't shout here again. He said, I say, make I not shout. I go shout the more. What did he do? He climbed a sycamore tree. Ha, <laughs> somebody. Eh? So wherever you are, there are some things you need to scream out. There are some things you need to shout. And the best, the best is what? It's just what? It's, it's, it's Jesus. Let nobody tell you that you talk about God too much. Let nobody tell you that you sing about God too much. Let no, no, nobody tell you, like I said. Let nobody tell you. Because these are also the small, small trick that the devil wants to use to make a lot of us to be weak. No. Let nobody tell you you are doing over Sabi. Or oh, I too know. Or you are in a competition. If you know that you are not competing with anybody, you are not doing over Sabi, you are not doing hypocrite. It's just because you want your father's business not to suffer. To God be the glory. Then why will you give up? You understand? So don't give up on these things. Don't. These are the little, little things that God is using. So wherever you are as a child of God, scream it loud. Even if they say you shout too much, shut up. Don't say, if, if they tell you shut up, tell them you cannot shut up my mouth. Climb the second mock tree like Zacchaeus and begin to shout. I begin to shout. The Bible says, let them that have ear, let them hear. Let them hear what the Spirit have to say to the church. And I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. So wherever you are watching me from tonight, somebody... If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, deem it fit because he paid the price. Like I said, don't look at your yesterday. Thank you for the wonderful word of God. 
my god oh mama love it i'm so blessed this is how god is doing it every 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 time every time of my simon hour you must see one new person nobody is new but this is the first time and she came and she represents she represents who she is she's just like me oh she's just like me you understand and this is me self you're not gonna move me again like i said if they call you oh, oh vasabi hypocrites i too know you want to add shine tell them yes it's my father's business there is a, a saying that says, shine your shine and let me shine my shine. On the last, everybody wear their crown. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. So, Mama, God bless you. I celebrate you as well. And every prayer that you prayed for me, let me tell you something. Every prayer you prayed for me, and I pray that you will get it in sevenfold in Jesus' name. Every prayer that you have prayed for me tonight, may that prayer as well go back to you in sevenfold. God will return it back to you in Jesus' name. Because when people pray with you with their heart, let them to be partakers of the blessing. God will bless you and your entire household as well. More grace. More grace. So let's be who we are. And like I said, if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, tomorrow might be too late. Don't tell me that you don't know that heaven is free. Air fire is free. Jesus is coming back again. So let us be dedicated. So I just want to appreciate God for how far he had led us tonight. Holy Spirit of God. I reverence you. Thank you once again for another wonderful moment in your presence. Thank you for the Simon hour of today. Thank you for how far you have led us. Spirit of God, I just want to say by yourself, give us a better understanding of this word every day. In whatever the devil is using to deprive us or draw away our attention from you, Lord. Help us, O oh Lord, to be so focused and dedicate our lives. Give us the grace to dedicate every part of us, every of our being to you. That you will become everything that matters in everything that we do, Lord. That we will not begin to do things on our own. We will not begin to run on our own. We will not begin to do those things that we think, oh Lord, that it is by our strength. But empower us to dedicate ourselves to you, sweet Holy Spirit. That we begin to have personal intimacy with you, Spirit of God. That you will lead us, you will guide us, you will teach us what to do. You will teach us how to talk. You will teach us how to behave. You will teach us how to lead. How to whatever that will do. You will by yourself not be in control of us. Father, help us that we will get to that realm supernaturally in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father, for how far you have brought us to us tonight. Even as we are living, we are not leaving your presence. May your presence continue to go before and after us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for as many that will watch this video and they will decide, oh Lord, to return back to you. I give you all the glory. Wherever they watch this video from, by yourself, sweet Holy Spirit of God, by yourself, minister to them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father, for what you are doing and the many more you are yet to do. For in Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless every one of you once again. I appreciate you all. Thank you for always coming around. Thank you for those that have shared the video. Thank you for those that have commented, for your like, for your love, for your shares, for your comments, even for watching. God bless each and every one of you. Let brotherly love continue. And I pray that God will help each and every one of us to end well in Jesus' name. Hope to see you all by the special grace of the Almighty God. If Jesus tarry in another moment of the Simon Hour on this platform, next week tuesday by 9 p.m don't forget always keep in touch and keep the dates and i pray that as we continue to strengthen ourselves god will continue to help us like i said i'm not intending to open a church i don't even have the time local assembly no it, the best thing we can do is just what i am the best thing i, I feel that i can do for my god is just what i'm doing now on the, the the little time i have on my platform or rather one on one true phone to god be all the glory to him alone, somebody, be all the glory. And don't forget, like I said, even whether you study with people, learn how to study on your own. Even whether you study with people, learn how to fellowship on your own. Even when you study with people, learn how to pray on your own. Learn how to sing on your own. Learn how to study on your own. Why? Because that is what matters most to God. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Remain blessed until we see next week Tuesday. All right, everyone. Bye.